Hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you all for joining in today. We have the teams from AIMS Delhi here, and we would love to start talking to you about clinical decision support system that has been um, developed after intensive research and is now being offered as a digital public good by National Health Authority. Having said that, I would invite uh, Dr. Dave and Mr. Mukut to take over and walk you through what the CDSS entails and what is in it for you as a DSC and a partner of for ABDM. Hi, madam. Thank you. Hello. Just a quick check. Are you able to hear Dr. Dave? If somebody could confirm or deny. No, 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 we cannot, I guess. Yeah. Okay, okay. No worries. One minute. Hello, everyone. Am I audible now? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you for the confirmation. So today we are going to talk about the clinical decision support system, which both of you might have already aware about. And then uh, we'll also discuss about the work that we have done before bringing clinical decision support system for the ABM compliant DSCs and the benefits that CDCs offers to the doctors and to the DSCs. So uh, can we move to the next slide? So these are the different topics which we are going to cover. So I will start with the CDCs part. Next slide, please. Thank you. So um, as I said, most of us are already aware about clinical decision support system. But to have a common definition, clinical decision support system, a computer-based program that are designed to assist the doctors. So this is very important word because when we uh, offer this clinical decision support system to the healthcare providers or to our clients, we need to give this message very clearly this, that this CDSS is designed to assist the doctors. It is not uh, an additional burden or additional digital tool which are going to create the more workload for them. It is basically a digital assistant for the doctors which analyze the data which will be being which is being captured by your own solutions and then what it does it has some back and rules which runs on the evidence-based guidelines and it provides a prompts to the doctors and there are already enough evidences that clinical decision support system helps in improving efficiencies reduce errors and uh, reduce adverse events and overall it improves the quality of care and CDC US recommends implementing clinical decision support system as one of the best practices. Moving to the next slide. AIMS, All India Institute of Medical Science, New Delhi, and Center for Chronic Disease Control, CCDC, has done a lot of work on clinical decision support system. They have implemented CDSs in various settings, and now they are bringing this clinical decision support system with the support of National Health Authority for free of cost as digital public good for all the ABDM compliant DSCs. Next slide. Now, why we need clinical decision support system in India? Most of us might have seen someone in our family suffering from hypertension and diabetes. But if you look at the number of hypertension and diabetes in India, there are more than 300 million people who are affected with hypertension and diabetes. And this prevalence is common among rural and urban population both. And then there is a very known fact about hypertension diabetes in the clinical community that about 50% of the patients, they are not aware about whether they have hypertension or diabetes. So they have the condition, but they are not seeing a doctor. Or even if they're seeing the doctor, no one is able to diagnose them because we don't have a appropriate uh, standards of care. 
then if we talk about people who have been diagnosed only 50% of them receive the care and out of those 50% only 50% of the patients who are on treatment they achieve the targets and when they achieve the targets in terms of desired outcomes long term clinical outcomes only 50% of them achieve the desired clinical outcomes so there is a rule of half so we have to definitely work on this particular conditions because as we uh, we can see there are more than 100 more than 300 million people who are already affected by this condition and the prevalence is going to increase every year uh, next slide so hypertension diabetes which are part of cardiovascular disease and uh, and cardiometabolic disease along with the respiratory disease are the co major cause of morbidity in india we know that there are poor adherence to the care guides there are low screening rates and we don't have the specialized doctors available in all part of india so that's why cdc is a very important tool which can bridge these which can bridge these gaps by promoting guideline based care yeah next slide please so we have already discussed about what cdc can do and as i already said aims and ccdc along with other collaborators have done a uh, tremendous amount of work on clinical decision support system their journey started in 2010 when they implemented the clinical decision support system in a tertiary care center for diabetes and cardiovascular diseases and after that they kept making changes in the clinical decision support system and they have implemented it at the tertiary care level primary care level and secondary care level at the community level and in 2017 state government of uh, tripura and mizoram they adopted the solution for state wide implementation simultaneously government of india started uh, the digital use of digital tool for national program for non communicable diseases and the clinical decision support system was integrated with the national program as well who has also implemented clinical decision support system developed by ccdc and aims for implementation of pan package and now clinical decision support system is a part of the national program for non communicable diseases and nha is also going to support the clinical decision support system for the abdm compliant companies so you can see there is more than 10 years of experience in implementing clinical decision support system for various kind of diseases at various kind of level next slide so that was about the implementation but what about the clinical outcomes this is one of the study which we did in himachal pradesh we implemented clinical decision support system in the government hospitals for almost 21 months there were around 21000 patients who were screened with hypertension diabetes and 6800 patients were treated for hypertension diabetes among 6800 patients 50% patients were not aware about their condition so again the literature also talks about the same kind of facts that 50% of the patients are not aware about the condition similar findings we got in our study as well where almost 3400 patients they were not aware whether they had hypertension diabetes what we did we did the follow up of these patient for over 18 months and what we saw there was a significant reduction in their blood pressure and blood sugar values and this reduction was maintained throughout the study period next slide so in the previous slide i talked about clinical decision support system being implemented at the primary care level now this slide talks about the clinical decision support system being implemented at the tertiary care level where the cdcs was used by the specialist endocrinologist and cardiologist even there what we saw when the doctors or when a specialized doctor they accept the clinical decision support system recommendations chances of their patient receiving the better controls are way higher if you look at the hba1c value patients for whom the cdc recommendations were accepted their mean hba1c value was 8 as compared to the patients who did not receive the care as per the dhs prompts their mean hba1c value was 8.6 similarly there was a difference of around 20 mm in uh, systolic blood pressure and around 48 uh, in the low, uh, ldl values next slide so again the last two slides we talked about the clinical outcomes which we can see during the visit of the patient but if we talk about the long term clinical outcomes of using clinical decision support system so recently we published a paper uh, in a peer reviewed journal 
where we have shown that if the clinical decision support system being, is being used for a longer duration, it also helps in achieving the better microvascular and microvascular events for the patient with hypertension diabetes. And what are these events? We, If you have seen a patient with hypertension diabetes, we see after some time they start having issues in their eyes or in their uh, kidneys, or then there are chances of cardiovascular disease. So all those events see a significant amount of reduction when we use the care given by the clinical decision support system. Why we are talking about these slides? Because when you go and implement this solution into your software, you feel you should know that this uh, technology which is being offered by NHA has been thoroughly researched and we have seen the clinical outcomes in the Indian settings of this technology. Next slide. So now we are going to talk about the benefits of clinical decision support system. For a doctor, it, um, uh, clinical decision support system, as I said, it is a digital assistant. It empowers the doctor in providing the personalized care to their patients. It, it gives the clinical management plans. So what it means, it provides the exact drugs which can be given to the patient along with the dosage and contraindications. <laughs> and uh, we, we provide the generic drugs name. We don't provide any... Uh, brand names then it also identifies the high risk patients and it helps the patient in terms of if we have to start some medications for example statins and aspirin to reduce the chances of heart disease it, it gives a prompt to the doctor that okay for this particular patient even we can start with statins and aspirin so that there is a secondary prevention of cardiovascular diseases next slide and this clinical decision support system, which is being offered by NHA, is already the part of the Government of India guidelines for non-communicable diseases. These guidelines were launched in May 2023, and uh, the Government of India now advocates using clinical decision support system uh, as part of the NCD management. Next slide. Similarly, WHO has uh, adopted clinical decision support system for their PAN package. And PAN package is a package for non-communicable diseases and also um, and the heart package, which is again designed for managing the cardiovascular diseases. Next slide. World Heart Federation also <laughs> included the clinical decision support system as one of the case studies. Uh, World Heart Federation last to last year released a new uh, guideline document for all the countries where, where they want to implement digital health in cardiology. In that particular roadmap document, they have talked about the importance of clinical decision support system and they have included the clinical decision support system well by AIMS and CCDC as one of the important case studies for improving overall care for the patient with cardiology, uh, cardiac disease. Similarly, United Nations has also included clinical decision support system developed by our team as one of the case studies in COP26 conference. Next slide. So, so again, these slides were just to show you that not only we have achieved the clinical outcomes when we have implemented the clinical decision support system, in fact, the medical bodies like WHO, WHF, and United Nations, whoever uh, the big organizations in, including the Government of India National Program for NCDs, they all have trusted the clinical decision support system developed by our team, and it has been part of the important uh, documents by various organizations. Now, how it works? Uh, you have already implemented your solutions in various settings. So it's, it's the same workflow. The patient walks into the health facility or clinic. Uh, it's, we, uh, it's, it's an ABDM compliant platform, they can create the ABA ID or they can scan the ABA ID. And when the patient registration is done, the patient is supposed to go to a nurse or any non-physician healthcare provider where they can do the initial assessment. Because we have seen in the, in the Indian healthcare setting, doctors are usually busy. They don't take the entire uh, examination details. For example, they will not check the height, weight of the patient. Usually an assistant in the clinic will be doing the these activities. So we can provide two credentials, one for the non-physician healthcare provider and one for the doctor, where the initial steps can be done by a nurse or any assistant, where they check their medical history, where they enter the blood pressure or blood sugar values or their height weight into the system. 
CDC has analyzed these medical mm -hmm. records, anonymized medical records. They don't, mm -hmm. CDC doesn't ask for any ABA ID or any patient identifier. Only the clinical parameters will be analyzed by the clinical decision support system. And it gives a recommendation back to the doctor screen. Now, doctor, they can review the CDS's recommendation. They can accept or reject the CDS's recommendation. Next slide. So in terms of data flow, uh, again, it's a very simple uh, slide for you to understand. Uh, if there is any ABDM compliance system, uh, if the patient is visiting the health facility or some parameters which are being captured at the PHR app, and all these parameters are being being linked to the, all these medical history is being linked to the patient profile. And these anonymized clinical parameters goes to the clinical decision support system. CDSS analyzes these parameters and gives the recommendation back to your solution. Next slide. It's API-based integration. And if you're interested in having the clinical decision support system for your platform, for your solution, you just need to show your interest. And after you show your interest, we'll arrange another workshop for you. We'll provide the detailed orientation. We'll give you the detailed demo about how CTSS works. We'll talk about API documentation, give you an overview. And we'll share this documentation and sandbox credentials with your team. They can do the initial testing. They can do the API integration. And once that integration has been done, your team can work on the UI changes because uh, you you must be capturing most of the parameters which are required by the clinical decision support system. Uh, but to show the recommendation on your platform, you have to make some changes in, in your UI. We can help you in making those changes in terms of guidance, uh, but uh, you have more experience in implementing solutions than us. And whatever way you think that these recommendations can be shown in your platform, it's perfectly fine. Again, the idea is to help our doctors to assist our doctors in providing the best care to their patients. And once the UI demo has been done, we move to the production environment. And it's a very simple API integration and it's a very simple process to follow. So in terms of all the DSCs, what are the benefits? Uh, one of the major benefits which I see, it improves your brand credibility because this CDS is, is being offered by NHG and AIMS. And then we have this CDS is being offered by uh, NHG for free of cost. It has been trusted by, as I said, many uh, medical and scientific authorities like WHO, Government of India, WHF, United Nations. We have done a lot of research. There, ha there, ha there have been many scientific publications on clinical decision support system. You get the competitive advantage in terms of implementing a technology which is being recognized by CDC US, which is being implemented uh, in various developed nations. Then also, we are hopeful when you provide this technology to your users, there will be increase in uh, user base. More doctors will be interested, especially in tier two, tier three cities. And we all, including NHA, we, the uh, ultimate aim is to provide quality care to our uh, population so we can achieve that goal by implementing the clinical decision support system. So next slide. So that's it from our side. And if you have any questions you can ask us now, uh, else we can move to another slide set where we can talk about what are the input and output variables uh, which are required for CTS to work. There is a message by Shishan. How can we apply to integrate the system? So uh, if you want to ask that, so probably you need to write to this email if you are interested in implementing the integrating the clinical decision support system. Yeah, uh, thank you, everybody. We will uh, answer your queries that are on the chat and which will be raised later as well. And we will also drop in uh, official email ID wherein you can send an email and indicate your interest. And that is when we will uh, take it forward with you individually, setting up workshops and supporting you end to end to enable CDSs in your uh, respective systems. So I think we can start with a demo video first. Then they'll be able to understand how it works. So my colleague is going to share two case scenarios. 
uh, of clinical decision support system. We can move five, ten seconds because the thing. I hope you can see the screen. Yeah, it's visible. Okay, great. Thank you. So, so in this video, we are showing a case scenario where the patient is not aware about whether the patient has hypertension or diabetes. Uh, we are using a system which has the clinical decision support system integrated within the uh, within the platform. Uh, yeah, we can move. We just entered the patient doesn't have hypertension or diabetes in the medical history. Now the patient. When the blood pressure was checked, it was 16802. When the random blood, random blood sugar was checked, it was 290. And the height of the patient was 5 feet 8 inches. So these are just simple parameters which are being entered into the clinical decision support system. Now, this is again the part of entire the EHR system. Now, clinical decision support system is throwing a diagnosis that patient has hypertension and the patient has stage 2 hypertension and we need pharmacological treatment to treat this patient. Similarly, clinical decision support system is suggesting the patient has diabetes as well. And if the doctors, they agree with the diagnosis, they move to the treatment plan, where uh, you, if you see on your screen, now we are showing the treatment plan. And this treatment plan is being shown as a generic class and the generic drugs name. So for example, there are multiple options to treat this patient. And for diabetes, we are suggesting the patient should be given metformin 1000 milligram. Doctor can accept or reject this recommendation. So this particular case scenario was a very simple case scenario where the patient was not taking any drug. Patient didn't. Uh, patient was not aware whether the patient has hypertension or diabetes. Now we move to the uh, second case scenario where the patient is aware about hypertension and diabetes. So you so most of these parameters are already being part of your system. Once you do the API integration, only changes that you have to do is in the your in your UI. Uh, can we move back? Yeah. So in this particular scenario, the patient has diabetes and hypertension. Patient is already aware about hypertension and diabetes, and patient has an asthma as well. Patient is already taking some medication for hypertension. For example, patient is taking amlodipine 5 milligram once a day. And the patient is taking glimepiride 4 milligram once a day. So patient is taking medication both for hypertension and diabetes. And on examination, their blood pressure was his blood, his or her blood, uh, blood pressure was 156, 96, and fasting blood sugar was 206. HbA1c was 7.9 and we enter the height and weight of the patient. So now, if you look at the hypertension diagnosis, can we pause? Yeah. So the CDSS is saying the patient has stage 1 hypertension, but we need the pharmacological treatment. CDSS is also talking about beta blockers as a contraindication. So it is telling the doctor what medication should be given and it also talks about the contraindication. Yeah, please. Similarly for diabetes, there is no contraindication, but we need to give some, give, give some sort of medication to the patient. Now the patient was already taking amlodipine. Now we have recommended to add another class of drug for this particular patient. And as you can see, we have recommended the class and in the brackets, we have given the name of all the generic drugs. Doctor, they can decide which drug they want to give. If the doctor, they don't want to give the 
this class of drug, they can also choose the alternative treatment plan. So we don't force the doctor to give the same recommendation. It is just to assist them. If you look at the diabetes, again, a uh, patient was already taking glimipride. So TDSS has given two options to the doctor, whether they can increase the glimipride dose to the maximum dose, 8 milligram, or they can go to the option B, which is to include the another class of drug. So basically, doctors, they have multiple options or uh, depending on the clinical profile of the patient, and they can decide not to give the treatment plan as suggested by CDSS for various reasons, because at the end of the day, doctor has the final say on making the decision about the medication. Any questions so far? Yeah, I could see a couple of things which we could add here uh, based on the basic profile and patient's BMI. Many times we do may have some coexisting illness which patient might not be reporting or doctor might be missing. Just see, I mean, complications related to diabetes and hypertension or say any disease we are talking about. Patient may have NAFLD or if BMI is high, age is high, patient may have COPD or if there is some breathlessness. So are there some suggestions inbuilt for additional diagnosis which could be uh, you know, possibility when we give a particular history to the uh, system. So, thank you, Dr. Chanda. It's a very uh, important question. So, currently, clinical distance system that we are offering is for hypertension, diabetes, abnormal lipids, dyslipidemia, and also we are giving the lifestyle suggestion through APIs. Now, coming back to your question, yes, we are also considering comorbidities like liver disease, kidney disease, COPD, asthma, heart disease, and uh, some other conditions as well. And these are the common conditions that we are considering in terms of giving the recommendations for hypertension and diabetes. So for example, if someone has kidney disease and reports to the clinic along with diabetes or hypertension, it will give the recommendation based on the clinical profile. It will, uh, if I'm not wrong, it will not suggest metformin, for example, or it will avoid uh, suggesting metformin. It will give the clear instruction that you have to have serum creatinine in certain level if you want to give uh, metformin. Similarly, it goes with the uh, hypertension drugs as well. What drugs to be preferred when the patient has these kind of medical history? If someone has liver disease, again, it will recommend something else. So based on the clinical profile. So it do care, take care of the certain comorbidities uh, in terms of giving the recommendation. But we're not giving the treatment plan for, for example, liver disease. We are talking about here hypertension diabetes, but it do consider other conditions while making the recommendations. Thank you very much. There was another query that came into my mind, just small query. Um, you know, at times, uh, concomitant drug history is also important. And uh, sometimes drug lead to different complications. Uh, what I couldn't see is past drug history was not built in uh, in this information system. So do you have past drug history and its interaction with that disease, existing disease? Yes, yes, we do. So uh, oh, because it was just a demo and okay. we didn't explain okay. all the possible scenarios because there can be 3,000, 4,000 scenarios which we can demonstrate. So I understand it, so we have another slide. So we do take care of the medical history. We do take care of the drug history. Again, only in relation to the hypertension diabetes because uh, currently, as I said, this is mainly designed for hypertension diabetes uh, and dyslipidemia because all these three conditions are interlinked. And if the patient is, for example, taking some wrong drugs for uh, diabetes, it will, it will advise the doctor not to use that drug based on the clinical profile of the patient and suggest some alternative. But again, the final decision will be taken by the doctor. Perfect, perfect. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Sorry for disturbance. No, 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 not a problem. Excellent questions. Any other queries? So regarding uh, the, this implementation and further, do you, you give us a uh, uh, sandbox credential like means there will be any uh, this is one thing i wanted to know whether the apis will be hosted at the nha or each one each the vendor has to vote the host the apis himself sir no so uh, so apis are being hosted through nha sport and you don't yeah. need to host the cds separately 
we'll provide you the sandbox access uh, once you have shown your interest and it's a uh, simple integration that you have to do with your platform and the main efforts will be required mainly in the ui changes that you want to implement in terms of receiving the recommendation on your platform so entire cds hosting maintenance is being done through nha it is similar to any other apis with the abdm similar yes uh, probably i will say uh, simpler to integrate mm -hmm. uh, sir are there any reference material available regarding uh, what changes are required on the ui so so if you have seen in the demo basically once you get the recommendation you have to figure it out where in your own workflow you want to show those recommendations but there is a, a separate web page for aim cdss uh you can refer to that uh web page uh, if you go to the abdm website you will see under the offerings there is aim cdss where you can click and get uh, much more information but if you are interested in doing the integration we can have one on one sessions or uh, arrange some other sessions for your team and as i said like if you are interested once you do your api integration we'll guide you we'll help you in the process of the ui changes as well we'll give you multiple examples how can uh, you do the ui changes in your platform again uh, because you know your users better than us you can make a decision based on our experience whether you want to implement a particular way or some other suggestions might come from you as well and it's it's again a simple process okay thank you sir uh another question is like uh, currently you have said like it is uh, specific to the hypertension and the diabetic so any uh, chances like in future we are going with the other diseases which could be commonly came up in the primary health care yeah so aims is working aims and C uh, ccdc they are working on multiple conditions and the cdc is um is evolving and we have cds as available for other conditions as well like for example copd is there asthma is there then uh, heart diseases are there but some of these cds are under trials and some of uh, these cds are in the process of being offered uh, to um, dscs but we want to start with something which is very prevalent and hypertension and diabetes we know that in our country so many people are Uh, are being affected by hypertension and diabetes and especially uh, if we look at any doctor they must be seeing the patient with hypertension and diabetes so we want to do start with some conditions which are very common in the indian population that's why and then uh, all of us will get some experience as well maybe in the phase 2 or phase 3 we will come up with more conditions uh through nha okay thank you so much and another thing is like uh, let's suppose sorry you are mute Sorry. Yeah, I was saying like let's suppose uh, we are uh, in a offline system. Then how is it be possible? Like, is it going to be work with the offline system or it is just an online system as of now? As of now, it is just an online system because it's a API call that you have to make. Okay, so it's not possible like um, for the offline functionality we can't do like uh, the local server setup. So, uh, as of now, probably I would say no. Mm-hmm. Through NHA, it's uh, uh like because it's an API based integration, so you have to be online in terms of getting the recommendation back to your system. Okay, thank you so much. But still, I will so suggest when... you go ahead with the integration, and then maybe after some time, if we see there is a requirement of building the offline capabilities as well, we can work on that depending on the volume that you're looking for. Okay. So. one of the things just on regarding the flow uh, each disease one by one the implementer has to start or uh, they are intermingled so hypertension and diabetes dyslipidemia we suggest you do the integration in one go because uh, uh, it's is the simple process and most of the time patient with diabetes usually have hypertension also or dyslipidemia also but again the apis are separate if your team just want to focus on a particular condition we are fine with that but our suggestion would be just to take the full advantage of hypertension diabetes and dyslipidemia but it's up to you so that means in future when ihd comes up there or other dc which are ready to come up there then we'll have to modify the ui as well i will i will not say that you have to modify the ui for example 
uh, your focus is on currently your focus is in treating the patient with whatever condition they are coming but later on you want to focus only on mental disorder just taking an example and uh, in that case you will be definitely having some parameters being captured for the mental disorder now if you have implemented the cds you already have built a space uh, on your platform where you are throwing the cds recommendation only thing minor changes will be required definitely but not the major changes because now you know how your platform is going to show the recommendation to your users only thing is that you need to adjust the space in throwing recommendation for multiple conditions and in some of the cases patient might not be having all the diseases so for example if, even if you implement cds for 10 conditions there will be very rare patient that you will be seeing with all the 10 conditions but you have to be ready with those kind of scenarios as well one more thing when the guidelines keep them keep on changing the treatment guidelines keep changing so we would believe that the cds will give a recommendation based on the upcoming guidelines exactly exactly they will have and we don't okay, worry yeah. much about that you don't need to yeah so even the doctor they, they don't need to worry but that's that's the beauty of clinical decision support system because uh most of us probably have access to the best doctors so guidelines come recommending also keep in the automatic approach yes yes when the new then, guidelines come the recommendations will follow accordingly exactly yeah. exactly and the dscs they have to do nothing with it because it will be changed uh in the back end itself until unless if there is a new guideline for example today we talk about fasting blood sugar random blood sugar or ppbs or hb1c if new guidelines comes in and they bring a new test for certain condition then obviously that has to be factored in uh, but uh, with the current parameters uh, dscs they don't need to do any work it will be automatically updated in the cdss and the doctors they will see the recommendation based on the latest guidelines so the nh will keep updating the so this sort of people what all to be done as long as okay. yes there will be versions coming up yeah so, yes. so we need to maintain that flexibility in our systems so the further modifications may come up and we need to be prepared sort of vendors have should, should keep that mind it is not hard gone but things can change in future and we need to be adjustable to that So, so don't think about the CDS's perspective. For example, currently your system has an examination or or a screen to capture the lab values, and if a new lab test comes into the picture, uh, which is being now popular among the doctors, you have to implement that test into your system, irrespective of whether you use CDS's or not. So, so similarly, uh, like even if you if there is a requirement. from the medical community that you have to have certain parameters into your ehr system uh, or hmi system you will implement it anyway so cdss again um, uh, like even when we share the list of variables which are required for cdss to work not all the variables are mandatory and it it acts like a doctor if a doctor has information only about the random blood sugar and the doctor has to take a decision because the doc- a patient doesn't have the hb1c value or fasting blood sugar value doctor will still make a decision whether doctor wants to start some medication or not depending on uh, what is the value of random blood sugar so similarly uh, the cdc has a list of variables but only few variables are mandatory so that you can see the cdc recommendation but if you don't have those values as well cdc will not stop your system to work it will still work as the way it is supposed to work what about legality regarding cds sir how much uh, legal proof the doctor follows the cds recommendation and if things go wrong due to some reason how long the nha will stand as a protector so see uh, as we said in the prescription there are uh, in in, uh, in our presentation and also uh, uh, when we share the documentation with you final prescription has to be done by the doctor now imagine a doctor is using your platform they are still making the prescription without cds mm. also we don't know whether they are making right or wrong prescription it is just to assist them mm. no you follow the cds as now and some then will it stand as a some sort of a protection for the doctor he has followed the cds so he can he be protected because he has followed the cds mm. 
say again, like there can be multiple factors which a patient might be reporting to the doctor and CDSS will work mainly on the values being entered in the system. One, one, one random example I can talk about, a uh, patient with diabetes comes to the clinic, fasting blood sugar, random blood sugar is too high, CDSS will recommend increasing the dose of the patient, uh, dose of the drug or may advise to add another class of drug. But yeah. patient might have reported to the doctor that he or she was not taking the medication for last one month or she or he might have attended a wedding last night and, be, and had a lot of sweets. That's why the random blood sugar might be too high. So there can be multiple factors. Again, the medical perception has to be done by the doctor, CDSS is just to assist the doctor. If there is a legal case against the doctor, he or she has to dealt it accordingly. CDSS doesn't provide any sort of guarantee in terms of that whatever the doctor has given is correct because we don't know what other parameters the doctor has considered while making the final prescription. No, it won't give any... As a start of, uh, he has not, there was no neglect from, from the doctor's side, no protection, some sort of this protection will, because he has taken the NH guideline and has followed no advantage from that point of view. So, again, like, for example, someone is following the medical guidelines by NICE or ICMR. Mm. Ultimately, doctors, they are following some guidelines. And um, if something happens to the patient, we don't go to the ICMR or NICE to say, okay, you have given these guidelines why something has happened to the patient. So we are not, again, it no, is... It ICMR is, guidelines... No, ICMR guidelines can be quoted as a protection for the doctor. Now, can the doctor quote the CDSS as a protection for himself in the court? That's what I'm asking. Again, I will so not say... Stay updated... <laughs> no, I, I will not say something like this that CDSS is going to provide That's the right. legal protection to the doctor in terms of something goes wrong because we are clearly saying that final position has uh, to be sorry, done uh, by the okay, doctor based on their clinical judgment. It is just to assist the doctor. And yes, there are proofs. It is being used by the government of India in their own platforms. And uh, WHO and other agencies have also used the clinical decision support system developed by our team. But everywhere we talk about CDSS just as a tool to assist the doctor. It is not a final prescription by the CDSS. Yeah, so, hello. Yes. Uh, good morning, Dr. Dev Hindu. I am Dr. Naresh Agarwal, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, uh, sir, I would like to know, sir, any charges can be, uh, the possibility of any charges in future or present, uh, which will be to pay by the uh, software vendor, sir, for this integration. No, there are no charges for DSC. Uh for the integration and using the clinical decision support system. All the expenses for the integration and maintaining the clinical decision support system is being borne by the NHA. Okay, thank you. What is the role of PHR at here in this scenario? So as such, clinical decision support system is designed for health facility where the your EHR or HMI system is being used because the CDSS recommendations are for the doctors. PHR app is mainly if the patient has some uh, medical history or some uh, if the patient has visited another doctor. So whatever data is being fetched by the EHR system when the patient is visiting the health facility, it is just to have the common data linkages. So in the PHR app, there will be no CDSS recommendation. Yeah, to implement uh, CDSS, uh, do we require uh, V3 APS need to is mandatory? Sorry, I didn't get your question. 
for example we have a hms system where we have integrated this avdm so we are currently in the process of integrating v3 apis so do we is it mandatory uh, before going to integrate cdss v3 need to be certified so you have to be only m1 m2 m3 compliant so that's it thank you So th there are multiple questions on the chat window as well. What will be the timeline? That's the last question I can see from Mr. Dhanush. So once you show your interest, uh, we uh, organize another session for your team where we talk about the detailed process of the integration. And then uh, we share the sandbox and API documentation with you. And you can start the integration. Yes, M1, M2, M3 are mandatory for the CDS integration. Hello. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, sir, I came in a bit late. So I just wanted to know the basic overview regarding the technology being used for the recommendation engine. Is, is it based on the machine learning algorithms or it is based on the LLM? Or... So it is a it is a rule-based clinical license power system. Okay. So we are not using any uh, patient database to make the recommendation. It is based purely on the scientific guidelines. That's why the chances of error is zero. So you're not using any LLMs. You're using your own data set for that. Yeah, we're using the scientific guidelines. OK. So there are diff uh, multiple case scenarios that have been put into the clinical decision support system. And all the recommendations are based on the purely scientific guidelines. Mm -hmm. So using the LLMs, um, or you're not using it? Are you, you're not using it no, as no. a context? No. Clinical data of the patient which is shared or uh, which is uh, sent to API, uh, like from security perspective, uh, are there any steps taken to ensure the uh, patient data doesn't get leaked? So oh, one thing is, ma'am, uh, it's just the anonymized data. We are not using any patient's indicator uh, for analyzing and giving the recommendation. And uh, all the security measures have been taken care of by NHA and the AIMS before offering the CTCs to the DSC. So at any given point of time, we are not asking or requesting any of the patient identifier. We're not requesting their name, phone number, or ABA ID. Nothing is being asked by any of the platform. Thank you. Okay, I have one question. So <clears throat> the CDSS recommendation, it is for radiology or for lab test also, it is uh, applicable or it is only uh, currently for doctor? I mean, for the x-rays and all. Or, um, what type of x-rays that should be conducted all those things that also happens here or no no so mainly cds is a recommendation for the management of the patient diagnosis and management of the patient in okay. certain scenarios we are giving the recommendation for certain lab tests so okay. for example uh one of the question I was, was about kidney disease so cds might say okay if you want to give certain medication make sure serum creatinine test should be done and this should be the value. So those kind of recommendations you will see, but we are not giving any advice on x-rays or we are not analyzing any x-ray images as well. Okay. And I have one more question. Like if a patient comes with diabetes, okay, whatever diabetes or hypertension, the recommendation will be given to the doctor that they should take these medicines. But some uh, patients may have multiple diseases also, like along with diabetes, they may have diarrhea, for example. So that recommendation will change or uh, how it is means based on that recommendation will be given because yeah. there so might for, be multiple diseases also, right? I mean, so for diabetes and hypertension, uh, they we are considering multiple conditions mm -hmm. which might affect the medications uh, which we are supposed to give to the patient. So it do consider multiple conditions while giving the medication to the patient if that medical history has been taken. Mm -hmm. So once we share the documentation with you you will understand what all conditions we are 
considering before making any final recommendation. Certain conditions might not affect the medication for hypertension and diabetes at all. Okay. So it's not necessary. The all that uh, will include past four or five history also. That is also possible. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Dr. Dev. Uh, we are running short in time. So, I would also like to request Kishan. Uh, he has joined, uh, he and his team has joined from Plus 91. And Plus 91 has finished integration with CDSS. So, I would love to invite him. Uh, Kishan, if you could uh, unmute yourself and talk to us about how the integration has been like, how much time did it take you, and your general feeling about CDSS. Here, uh, for, the, sure. for all the participants. Thank sure. you for joining in Kishan today. Thanks, thank you. Uh, so we are very thrilled to be first uh, integrator to fully become uh, integrated with CDSS. I mean, it's a wonderful system because typically when you are looking at CDSS, you have to pay a lot of money to get any commercial uh, CDSS system. While NHA is giving this as a free of cost, which, which is going to give you a, a big competitive edge uh, for your product, right? So we, we were very uh, keen on integrating it. Uh, we have finished the integration. And uh, to be honest, it's a very simple integration. Uh, the APIs are very straightforward. There are two diseases that they are covering, diabetes and hypertension. So there are very simple APIs that you uh, pass the certain uh, vitals as well as certain uh, lab tests, like for example, fasting blood sugar or random blood sugar. So based on that, you get recommendations that uh, uh, this, first of all, the diagnosis, whether they they have hypertension or uh, they have diabetes, uh, and they recommend you uh, the disease, uh, sorry, the uh, drugs, drug classes that you can map with your own drug database. And um, yeah, that that that's all. And later on, they also provide you lifestyle advice. So this is a very simple integration. Um, as we were integrating for the first time, we were the first integration. Uh, I would say we took about a month because both teams were learning, uh, things were being smoothened out. But I think now that these things are smoothened out, we uh, we have completed integration. I think for any new integrator, it probably should take about a week to integrate, uh, start doing testing, and maybe then you know uh, start showing it to their customers and start planning rollout. So yeah, so that was a very good experience. I think very simple API integration. Uh, I think any integrator would be able to do it within a week uh, with, with their simple APIs that they have provided. And I'm very pleased to say that we have then started uh, doing a UAT pilot at uh, KC General Hospital in Bangalore. The doctors and the staff are very happy to see a support system being provided to them because as you know, the guidelines, treatment plans are very important. If the right medications are not being provided, uh, the treatment would not go as planned. And uh, that's why they have now a digital assistant for them that uh, that would guide them based on all these criteria, all these different variables. They can get uh, options of different treatment plans. So they were very happy. And actually, they have been after us to say, please, jaldi isko release karo. Please, please release it fast. Because we had to go through some for formalities and I'm very pleased to inform that we have got the approval from all the authorities and they, they are rolling it out uh, this week in KC General Hospital. So. so I'll be happy to answer any any questions related to integrations, uh, our experience. Any, anyone have any questions? Any challenges you faced during integration? Sorry? Any challenges you faced during integration or while using it? Uh, no, I think uh, the only few challenges were that uh, as we were the first integrator, there were some some smooth some API that needed smoothing out, clarity were required. So those kind of things were initially there, but now the documentation is very well written. So I, I think there should not be any challenge. Uh, very straightforward uh, variables are there, like some few related to their lifestyle, the initial assessment that you saw in the initial demo. So those are the kind of parameters that you will have to take. Um, a few lab uh, lab values like uh, uh, fasting, blood sugar, etc. And I think those are very simple inputs that, it, that you need to provide. As the output, you would be getting treatment uh, plan recommendations, uh, as well as the diagnosis uh, based on those criteria. So I think it's very simple. I don't think you should be facing any challenges there. 
is this done in mobile or web and uh, have you implemented this in hms or in, uh, at the moment we have integrated in our uh, web application uh, because this is meant for the doctors and typically our doctors are used uh, doing the consultations uh, on on their uh, web portal web application so yeah this is in implemented in web thank you Hey, hi, Kishan. So, Kishan, is this application is uh, like the CDSS is deployed in Bihar also with Bhavya or? So, this this, this is in plan for Bihar. First, uh, we, we plan to roll it out for uh, KC General Hospital, which is planned for this week. And yes, we are also exploring the option of providing the same option for Bihar also. So, we, we need to work with the relevant authority. So, we are in process and in discussion about. Okay. And how is the feedback you have uh, received from this KC General Hospital? So. Uh, doc, yeah. So doctors were very happy. I think uh, we we are we are moving in that direction where doctors are now becoming tech savvy and interested in you know trying out new technologies. And this is one of the very good use cases uh, for uh, new tech that keeps coming. in. CDSS is, is like they they will al although they will be making the decision. It's it's something that they will be able to see that uh, yeah these are the uh, CDSS recommendations so they can align their plan and see whether they are going in the right direction and they can you know modify adapt their own treatment plan based on that so they they were they are very keen on using it yeah. thank you so much Kishan uh, I think uh, we are over time now but thank you so much Kishan thank you Dr. Dave uh, for okay. the session for us uh, for all of you who are interested, please feel free to drop us an interest on abdm.cdss at nsa.gov.in. We will drop that email ID in the chat window also. Please keep it handy. Um, even if you don't want to start integration immediately, feel free to talk to us. And if you want to start immediately, do let us know. We will uh, provide you one-to-one -one, one -one support. Uh, to finish integration. And just like Kishan said, the APIs are pretty simple and it's likely to take you one week or at max two weeks uh, to finish all the development and move into testing. And we at NHA are here to make this process as easy as possible for you. So thank you all for joining in today. Uh, your, intro, your email ID that you can uh, see in the chat bot, uh, please feel free to drop us an interest. Thank you so much. Uh, we will see you again in the next webinar uh, when we host it again next. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining in. Thanks. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.